Oh, hey, you look like you can use some LEDs. I got a lot of LEDs in here. Come on, get in my van. Let's go, come on. Hello everybody, welcome in to my van. Today, or tonight rather, I'm going to be comparing some Oxbeam light bars. Full disclosure guys, Oxbeam did send me one of these light bars for free. I believe it was this one, and it was the most expensive one. However, I did buy two more different Oxbeam light bars so I could do a comparison video. And they actually have a couple more versions of light bars you could get, and they all come in like different sizes, but I couldn't get them all because I mean, we're, I'm filming this in a van, guys. Give me a break. I feel like someone's like staring at me through here. I need light bars all around the van. So anyways, guys, let's go ahead and unbox these. Sometimes, guys, people ask me, hey, what do you do with all those boxes? Nah, I'm just messing with you. Nobody's ever asked me that. Starting out with the first light bar, we have the side shooter. And this is actually the cheapest one in this comparison video. This is the 22 inch version. And in the center, we have three rows of individual LEDs. And then on the ends, two rows of LEDs packed together. And what makes this one so unique is that it has side lights that go out to the side, hence the name Side Shooter, which is pretty cool. So it gives you a little bit of light so you can see where you're turning. And that way you don't have to get extra LED light pods. And as you can see, it is at a little bit of an angle. Keep in mind, this one does not come with a wiring kit and it's probably why it's a bit cheaper than the other ones in this video. This one, and I think all of them, just use some kind of an aluminum housing. The waterproof rating on this one is IP67. So the six means it's completely dust proof and the seven means that it has protection against the effect of temporary submersion in water, 30 minutes up to three feet. Obviously you're not gonna need that kind of waterproofing with a light bar, but as long as they can stand up to rain, that's all I'm really concerned about. And the main problem with just light bars in general is that a lot of them leak water on the inside. So it will be interesting to see how these Oxbeam light bars hold up to water over time. Next we have the white and amber light bar. This one's interesting because it's got a row on the top and bottom of single white LEDs and then in the middle it's got clusters of amber LEDs. This one comes in a little bit more expensive around the $90 price range. Comes with the bottom mounts and it doesn't have a place for side mounts. However, I believe you can get a version that does have side mounts. It comes with some zip ties and crimps and fuses. Uh, sticker instructions and it also comes with the complete wiring harness which includes the controller so you can switch through all of the modes and it also has an on and off switch the light bar harness does come with three wires which is the ground the power and then the signal wire for changing the modes. So interestingly, this one claims to be IP68 and the eight means it can be submerged underwater, I think up to 13 feet indefinitely, which is uh, really hard to believe, especially with the wire that goes into the housing. Who knows, maybe I'll use this one as a test to just submerge it underwater and power it for a month and see if it, see if it lasts. But I mean, you really don't need them to be actually waterproof. You just need them to be able to withstand and any kind of water pressure, especially when you're driving fast in like a heavy downpour, it's gonna be 
taking a lot of water. Next we have the 5D Pro. And look at this thing, it's a lot thicker than the other ones. And it definitely seems like a bit higher quality. It's definitely a little bit heavier. And normally these are in the $150 price range. So it's a quite a bit of an increase. We're gonna see if it's worth that extra price or not. This is the newer upgraded version for 2021 and it's got high intensity OSRAM P8 plus KW3 LED chips. And on the sides, it's got two rows of single LEDs. And then in the middle, it's got these projectors, which is pretty cool. And from what I've heard, those Osram LED drivers are really good. And that's probably why it's quite a bit more expensive. The color temperature is a 6500K, so a little bit cooler than the side shooter. It claims to have 22,000 lumens. And the distance is one lux at 509 meters. This one also comes with the uh, wiring harness, which I hope it would at that price. And obviously instruction sticker. And unlike the other ones, this one comes with both the bottom mounts and side mounts. So you can choose which one you want. This one also claims to have an IP68 rating. And it supposedly has a high efficiency cooling system for maximum component longevity. And you can really tell because it's got some big, massive heat sinks on here. I've done real life wattage tests on quite a lot of LED products. And what I found is that it's never the same as the actual specification. It's usually about half. And I'm not sure why that is, but I don't really mind it because I'd rather be pulling less watts so I can add more LEDs. And I got my power supply set to about 14.5 volts. 14.5 is about where your running voltage would be on a 12 volt system. First up, we have the side shooter. We'll go ahead and power that on. And oh my goodness, that is bright. It's like 12 o'clock and I hope my neighbors are watching because they're gonna think the aliens have just landed. The wattage spec for this uh, side shooter light bar is 288 watts. In real life, if we multiply volts times amps, we get a rounded, 49 watts which is a lot lower than the spec but this is why i like to test it in real life next up we have the white and amber light bar and the spec they give us is 420 watts so I'll power that guy on it's nice and bright we're starting out with the white and we can cycle through go to amber and as you can see the amperage is staying pretty much the same this is the white and amber and then we have the strobe modes i'm going to get a seizure and then back to white and we're getting around it 55 watts so that is nowhere near 420 watts at the spec that's not a bad thing because 420 watts would definitely uh not make your altimeter as happy next we have the big beefy 5d pro we'll power that on and check that out we are maxing out my power supply. That is a hungry, hungry beast. The spec they give us for this one is 180 watts. And in real life, we're getting about 147 watts, which is much closer to the spec they give us. Definitely getting a bit warm and it is quite bright. All right, let's do a beam pattern test. I have the exposure much further down, but uh, I will keep it consistent between all three light bars. So here is the side shooter. It definitely puts a lot of light out to the sides. Here is the white and amber with just the white only. We'll switch to amber. The amber definitely puts a lot more out to the sides. And then we'll do both. Here's the 5D Pro and looking at that center part with the projectors is like looking at the sun. Next, let's do a brightness test and my camera is in uh, manual mode and I'm gonna keep the settings exactly the same, including the white balance. Right now I have the Forerunner going. It's got the stock headlights still. And this is what the low beam looks like. And this is the high beam. Here's the side shooter. Here's the white and amber light bar with just the white. And we'll switch to amber and then amber and white. And here's the 5D Pro, and that this thing shoots a lot of light pretty far. All right, here we are in the backyard, and this is the trusty side shooter. 
definitely gives you a lot of light all the way to both sides. Here is the white and amber on white only. Here's amber, amber and white. All right, this is the 5D Pro. That's actually pretty unreal how far those projectors go. As far away. I hope I don't upset my neighbors too much. They're gonna think the aliens are here. Well guys, that's about all I have time for in this video, but be sure to let me know down in the comments below which light bar you like the best. And also, I'm gonna be installing the side shooter on the Forerunner, and I'm just gonna do a relay and switch setup. And then I'm gonna be installing the 5D Pro on this van right here, and I'm probably gonna get one of the Oxbeam uh, switch panels um, so I can control a lot of other stuff as well. But anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. But uh, also, I will leave the links to all these light bars down in the description below if you wanna check them out. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this. But uh, anyways, I will catch you guys later. Peace out.